Hello and good morning to everyone. We are still accepting more attendees. We'll start in few minutes. Thanks for waiting. We have our final attendees waiting and we will start in two minutes. Right, Amit, should we kick it off? Yeah, Karim. So, uh, hi, I'm Amit Gupta, working as a solution sales architect in Middle East region with Vyom Labs. Along with me today, we have my friend and gem of this industry, Mr. Karim, enterprise sales manager from Datadog. Morning, and everyone. And my colleague, Ms. Varda, solution sales manager from Vyom Labs, Middle East region, who will be accompanying me in this webinar. Hello, everyone. Good morning. In the next 45 minutes, we will take you through organization journey on cloud migration. We will also discuss the different stages of migration. We will stress why companies get delayed or get failed in each of these stages. At the end, we will close this session with why partner with us and we'll take your feedback and questions. We will also draw conclusion on why observability is critical during this migration journey and my co-host will walk you through with the details. We are going to kick it off with that why companies move to cloud and what that journey look like. Uh, adoption trend shows that companies continue to move to the cloud and many are struggling to accelerate their, these initi initiatives. Although the cloud can improve business agility, accelerate innovations, lower the cost, enhance operation efficiency, IT organizations often run into obstacles that can complicate deployment, lead to access spending, and comp compromise their security and compliances. 
to accelerate these in, in accelerate this initiative and increase the success rate of multi cloud adoption organization should follow comprehensive end to end adoption framework backed by machine learning and unified observability platform across the multi cloud by taking this holistic approach they can avoid pitfalls and maximize the result delivered by their cloud multi cloud journey or the strategies to summarize cloud migration can bring you following benefits it will help you to reduce the it cost it will help you to improve your operation resilience it will increase your development engineering and productivity and finally it will improve your business agility if you look at the business outcome you will get tool cost to tools cost reductions it downtime which will help you to mitigate revenue losses and their sla penalties customer can also get benefited by their end user experiences and etc now let's walk you through with the different stages if this how the migration journey look like cloud migration takes time and effort a successful migration requires cross functional planning controlled migration executions and ongoing management once completed it will ensure you are actually realizing the benefit of being in the cloud we have divided this journey in a phase which includes plan migrate and run in the planning phase we do analysis of technical and business needs the first phase involves the determination of objective of the migration and depending or deciding on the most appropriate method of strategy to migrate it depending on the different factors such as purpose timelines and the constraints in this phase we also conduct proof of concept where we try to identify the poc workload that is proof of concept workload and the measure to the success criteria what are the measures we can we can identify the success criteria i'll walk you with the det- walk you through with the details what could be the measures of or the parameters we are we are talking about in the second phase that is called as migration we are t- t- taking the plans you have developed and bringing them to the fruition during the migration phase you need to be careful about exact set of steps you take to for your configuration or you develop as you are usually repeat them during your non production and production migration waves the migration phase is when you put in place your infrastructure component your iam your networking firewall rules and your service accounts to ensure they are configured properly this is also when you test your application on the infrastructure configuration ensuring that they have access to their database file shares web server servers or the load balancers it also includes active directory servers and more migrations also includes using logging and monitoring to ensure your application continue to function with the necessary performance let's understand what lies in the run phase we have talked about planning we have talked about migration now what are the steps included in the run phase you have completed your migration but not your journey now is the time to begin comparing pre and post migration performances migrate moni- uh, migrating your monitor cloud performance in accordance to your provider service level agreement that is your sla and your own performance goals be on the lookout for the customer facing issues that arise from a new cloud environment detect unexpected changes and fine tune application and the infrastructures so now we have understand what lies in plan migration run phase now let's talk about why organization fail or get delayed during each of these stages of cloud migration journey uh, Amit, if i can interrupt you for a second please uh, i've uh, we've seen on the chat from uh, uh, the audience that some of you are not able to see the slides um you need to refresh please if you're not able to see them uh, once you refresh your screen um the slides will appear thank you Uh, apologies amit go ahead please no worries kim thank you so much um, so now let's talk about why organization fail or get delayed during each of the stages of the cloud migration journey one of the most common reason where organization struggles is lack of planning for both business and operational impact some common pitfalls of insufficient planning includes unforeseen errors that is lack of understanding and incorrect implementation of best practices another reason for such circumstances is staying in the present not looking on the beyond that is a there is a major struggle which we used to have right now we are looking at the present but not looking beyond now we have to understand the future as well we have to assess the future as well you are building your cloud for today but not for the future 
while it is important to understand how you will use your cloud today it is critical to take the future into account and build plan that anticipate your growth or your business new model the the next uh, consequences we will feel it is inability to in execute your large large migration program at a scale for migration pro- for the enterprise migration tasks are executed in same order for every servers in your environment this means that every small insufficiency can cause massive delays and send your costs skyrocketing another reason could be an inaccurate view of your infrastructure if your organization cmdb that is configuration management database is not perfectly up to date you are not alone given this reality most organization faces long and tedious tedious interview processes that rarely accurate the less accurate your infrastructure analysis the more likely you will be break your application connection in the cloud migration process last but not the least your workload and storage misalignment these are the common factor we need to consider during your journey at a nutshell there are few numbers which have which we has been gathered based on the feedback received like 90% of the cio experience disrupted or failed migrations 25% met their actual migration timelines 74% have repatriated their application back to on prem after failing to realize what is the value in the cloud till now we have discussed motivation towards your cloud migration journey different stages factors to be considered during this journey to avoid failures and delay now we have to ensure how a successful cloud migration we have observability that can act as a rescue observability gives you the companies the visibility that they need effectively prioritizing resources and minimize incident during and after your migration process making your existing application infrastructure and data layers more observable should be your first priority even before you begin your cloud migration process before because data observability give your organization performance uses cost baseline that can inform all cloud migration decisions in the planning phase plan what cloud resources are needed and what resources needed to migrate create a baseline of performance to track and measure improvement throughout your cloud migrations in the migration phase you need to provide visibility throughout your migration processes across all pillars of observability ensure that the incidents are identified and resolved quickly without any cause of delay in the run phase you need to build resilient and scalable cloud native apps faster and with less downtime <coughs> through monitoring across matrices stress and log therefore it is essential it teams to maintain observability and control when monitoring performance and ensure a consistent user experience in the cloud both during the migration process and the afterward as well this is especially important in today's hybrid work environment where the cloud based technologies are becoming increasingly prevalent it is critical for companies to have an ability to accurately track and measure the status of their migration through performance and end user metrics this both increase visibility into what part of migration are doing well and what parts requires more attention thus boosting the success rate there are few metrics displayed on the screens which we have think which will help you boosting the organization success rates the parameters which we have captured and bucketed under performance metrics user experience metrics and the network metrics with our series of discussions along with your cios and ctos infrastructure kpis or measures your hardware and network uses a good cloud management platform should give you all the necessary inf- infrastructure kpis at a glance which includes your cpu uses memory disk network latency or the load balancing if you're talking about end user and performance it will be crucial for knowing if your migration has been successful or not this usually measured through your error rate error type csat and nps if you consider your network matrix it will also be a baseline underneath the other parameters like network io that is your bandwidth latency and request volume we would love to understand what is the definition of your cloud migration right which are the areas of performance give you the most cause of concern please ping me in the chat window where the which you think that metrics you think is critical for your inf- organization or infrastructure so, so so to align your understanding with ours we have few polls for you there would be few polls which would love to understand your responses
so meal while you are answering the polls now we can we, we we can we can we have talked about your journey cloud migration journey different stages what could be done in each of the stages why company get delayed or failed during each of the stages how observability and their three pillars that is logs traces and law and matrices can be a guiding force for a successful migration we also need to understand how we as a organization of expert in organization cloud migration journey can help you during all the above things which we have explained in our earlier discussion organization need to understand why should they partner with us what experiences we have in this field let's talk about few numbers on this we have more than 20 plus experience in this industry specialization in service operations artificial intelligence and automations we have a fantastic team of certified consultant which will help you in attaining your organization goal we have customer in gcc in all the verticals having said that i am handing over to one of the gem of the industry kareem to talk further on the cloud migration journey kareem over to you perfect thank you amit so guys we've heard a lot about how um observability can can help with the cloud migration journeys but also um the the ins and outs the pitfalls of um the cloud migration um and we also said we 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 said that it's super important that you partner with the right um uh company with the right organizations who's expert but it's also very critical for organizations to partner with the right technology i want to introduce a bit data dog here and um the platform for a uh, observability and the three pillars of observability consolidated into this one platform you're talking about a future proof technology that has been rated a leader in gartner magic quadrant for observability in gigaom um ai ops and the forester um wave for monitoring solutions so you're really talking about a um a leader a solution that is here for the future but also when you're talking about migration to the cloud and when you're talking about hey I'm doing something I have a legacy on premise um environment and I want to move it to the cloud a very important metric to measure is are you going to be cost efficient because at the end of the day if you're going to spend 3 or 4 or 5 times more on the cloud then that beats the purpose right but it's also the same thing with observability how are you going to grow with your observable environment on the cloud without really increasing exponentially your total cost of ownership so obviously a cost efficient solution is very important at this point and i get to the third point which is the consolidation or the unified platform and you've often seen that tool sprawl or silo tool do not really bring the value for for infrastructure for operations team for devops teams for network team business applications you name it right security teams as well so it's very important to have a unified platform to provide a single pane of glass other people call it full visibility some call it 360 birds eye view so whatever the term is basically one stop shop for all of your observable data in this one platform but then also super important is when you get to use this tool or solution or platform and expectedly you want to have all of your um engineers developers uh, support functions um infra ops security using that platform you need to ensure that this platform is very simple and easy to use the last thing you want is for them to be needing to learn how to write scripts and develop code to be able to get what they need to we're talking um a simple report or dashboard to to create into really pushing agent observing data creating alerts and making sure that you're monitoring all of your environment so now that we've covered why partner with vim labs and data dogs the next journey i want to take you through is really where and how data dog can help you with this cloud migration we're going to focus 
on the three stages that Amit introduced to you earlier, which is obviously the plan, migrate, and the run. And we're going to start, obviously, with the planning stage. So during planning, like every single thing you're going to plan, there's going to be some challenges, some pain points, some issues that you want to resolve, right? If you're planning to do something, it's because you have objectives, you have goals, and potentially and crucially, uh, um, challenges and pain points. Some of the main, point, main pain points you will um, find during your planning stages that um, I, I have an on-premise environment, but what are the resources and how much are they going to cost me if I move them to the cloud? So in effect, where is my baseline? And how can I improve on this? Understandably, the first thing you want here is to, to model or map your services and have a solution that can show you, you the dependencies of your application loads, your load balancers, your databases, your servers, so on and so forth, right? So understand what link links to each other and how the service is actually modeled. The other thing is really mapping your cloud infrastructure to the new ephemeral non-monolithic environment that you want to move to. And let me give a quick example here. You might be running typically virtual machines on-premise, right? So you've you bought racks of servers, bare metal, and then you've used a virtualization tool like Hyper-V or virtual um, uh, ESX, for example, and you've created your virtual machines. Now, when you move to the cloud, will you move to a server-based instance? Will you move to, for example, an EC2 instance from AWS? Or will you move this load into a serverless functions like Lambda, for example, with the AWS? Right? So here's where you're going you're gonna to start planning that it's not only about lifting and shifting to the cloud. It could be a lot more because serverless functions like Lambda can provide you scalability and uh, cost efficiency later on in your journey. So obviously now we need to map that legacy and cloud infrastructure. What do we need in terms of tooling to be able to get the dependencies and the mapping of the infrastructure? Well, that's basically your APM comes first, right? Because it's that APM which is going to create for you the service map, the link between your front end into your back end. So your front end user um, accessed um, portal or web app or native mobile app into the backend application slash database slash firewalls and everything that can um, that is um, underlining that service in terms of components. And once you have this trace, then you need to make sure that it is linked to your log because it's in the log where you can understand the issues, the outages, and pinpoint where exactly in the code is the issue. The other thing is that after the service map, well, you also need the host map, the infrastructure host map. Understand basically what infrastructure, what hosts you have on premise, and how these are going to be moved to hosts or serverless um, on the cloud. And obviously, how they connect or depend or rely uh, to other components um, through the network, right? So this is basically what we're going to start with in the planning phase. And your outcome at this point is going to be, during the migration, a faster migration and a non-delayed migration, so a migration that is following the plan but also an accurate baselining. So we know exactly what we have on premise and we know exactly how to map it to the new technology on the cloud. And obviously, like every single IT project, you will have issues and outages. You, you will expect this, right? 
every single project in the world with IT, whether on-premise, on the cloud, apps, no matter what, there will be issues. But it's all also very critical to resolve these issues quickly. So be able to investigate and resolve, but also be able to be proactive, detect these issues before they can potentially happen and resolve them before your user base or your customer base is impacted. So how does Datadog help? Well, in a nutshell, and I'm sure you've noticed it already, it's the three pillars of observability, right? We talk about infrastructure monitoring, being able to draw for you that host map, capture for you all of your uh, metrics, whether they're standard or business. And I'm going to give you an example here of a business custom metric. We're working with a retail um, uh, group in the UAE. Um, and a few months ago, there was the Black Friday, or actually they call it here White Friday. And some of the custom business metrics they introduced during that day is all about conversion in retail. So basically, how many people are logging into my native mobile app and my web portal? How many people are searching for um, goods to buy? What is the conversion ratio of goods being searched versus goods being added to the cart? And then the conversion rate between goods being added to the cart versus goods being actually ordered, right? So here, yes, we were looking at CPU and memory and, and application and trace and logs and everything, but they wanted to introduce these business metrics because that was what they needed to understand in order to say that their um, a White Friday was a success or not. Right, so we start obviously with knowing the infrastructure. On top of that infrastructure is a layer of applications, right? Front end, back end, supporting apps. We need to also make sure that we trace it end to end. So when the request gets to person logging into your front end, working on the front end, up to your back end, committing on the database or pulling data from the database, that trace is all now part of your application performance monitoring. But this is also what will what you will use to draw your service map, your, your service model, right? And the same way as infrastructure here, you'd be also to add your consumption metrics. Now we've discovered, monitored the infrastructure. We are end-to-end -end tracing the applications. But what about understanding exactly where the issues are or potential issues are, because remember, we want to solve them as quickly as possible. Then this is where your log management comes into effect. And it's basically your logging without limits where you're able to ingest everything, every single load from anywhere, but be able to index only parts of the logs that are important to you, right? We all know how huge and long the log files are and how there's repetition, and not all of the log file is something that you want to look at, but there are potential and specific parts that you will index. This is what the solution is going to do to help you with um, understanding the logs. And at the end, there's always the performance monitoring, being able to understand the traffic flow, the latency, the bandwidth, and make sure that your customers or end user community has the greatest experience and then there are no bottlenecks within your traces from the front end up till the back end right so that's the plan phase it looked simple and it is very simple when you have observability right and this is the same theme we're going to carry into the next two phases which is obviously now the second one, the migrate. This is the actual start of the work, right? We have identified um, some load. We have planned how we're going to baseline, uh, move on-premise to cloud, what we're going to move. And now it's all about doing some actual migration. But what are the pain points that you might face? Well, some of them are going to be around 
um, delays and overruns. This is something that Amit talked about in a lot of details because many uh, organizations have been delayed for months um, with their cloud migration because of this. The second thing is that remember that your on-premise service has agreements and service level objectives that were agreed with the business, right? You might have agreed on a 99.99% availability, this response time, that resolution time, so on and so forth. When you migrate to the cloud, you need to at least meet these objectives or deliver better, right? To so continuously improve. You can't move from telling the business, I have an on-premise application that I'm going to make available or guarantee its availability at 99.9% .9 of the time. But then you move to the cloud and say, well, it's now available only 99% of the time, right? You need to improve or at least meet the same objectives. So here is when we talk about ensuring that the agreements are met and resolving issues. Again, we want to ensure that the objectives are met. So we want to resolve issues as quickly as possible and not to delay the migration effort or activities. At the core of this is your core SLO and monitors, so the alerts, but also it's your infrastructure monitoring with the metrics that are captured with on top a layer that it's taking all of this data, this metadata, and transforming it into actionable insights, into information for you to be able to make some decisions, right? And this is nothing but your dashboards, your single pane of glass dashboard. But also we talk a lot about proactive, right? So how can we become proactive? Well, it's all about these robots or bots or synthetic tests that you are able to create to go here and there to your APIs and microservices and portals and make sure that it's continuously testing your uh, newly deployed application and detecting any issues for you before appearing, um, before your um, end users or customers are impacted. The outcome here is simply, first you're gonna streamline your incident resolution process. So you're gonna be able to investigate quicker and resolve quicker. You're gonna be able to have your data or I should say your, your information presented to you based on persona with drill down capabilities, being able to see these dashboards anywhere and anytime and make decisions. But also you'd be able to reduce the noise, reduce the false positive, the false alerts. Everyone calls it differently, but effectively it's that probable root cause. It's that jump over the investigation time to make sure that you have a solution based on AI and machine learning, providing you with capabilities to reducing uh, to reduce the noise for you. So how can Datadog help you <clears throat> in this migration stage? You're going to see that we're starting with the core three pillars of observability again. We've talked about capabilities, but then I'm going to add a couple more here. One of them, and it's super important, is your continuous profiler. Because now with your infrastructure and your NPM and your log, you're going to continuously profile what's happening with your requests, uh, drawing your flame graph and under understanding where the bottlenecks are, and getting to the code where you're going to pinpoint exactly which part of the code is the one causing the issue. We also said we want to meet objectives and we want to become proactive. And this is through the robots or the synthetic tests where you're going to create these API tests to go and continuously test your newly deployed application. Also using network monitoring, so network device monitoring and network performance monitoring to be able to um, map and visualize the network traffic, the aggregation, the bandwidth, the latency, and inform people whenever needed. And as part of this cloud migration, you might also have migrated a database. 
And this is where database monitoring comes to effect, where we're going to first be able to monitor the queries and how we're pulling data from this uh, database and whether there's uh, latency in the commit or in the pull of data. And obviously, with the help of the synthetics, with the help of the network monitoring, we'd be able to detect any potential bottleneck or outage. Long journey, right? And we're almost there. We have planned, and we've shown you how observability can help during the planning. We've migrated some of the workload, and we've shown you how observability can help with this migration um, stage of that uh, cloud journey. But what you will do continuously and forever while you're using these um, cloud and uh, cloud workloads is the operate stage, the run, right? And the run is very important because typically you might neglect or ignore some of the issues during the plan and, and, and migrate, or some organizations have done that, to, only to get to the run stage and find out how uh, many issues they have and how, uh, um, how problematic the migration was. So let's drill more into that um, run stage. And let's start with the same, um, the same pain points, which is how to right-size the environment. That's the first thing we're going to look at. How to reduce tool sprawl and how to innovate, keep innovating, introduce new capabilities, new customer-facing apps, and gain competitive advantage over um, over my other um, competitors. Let's start with right-sizing. And I'll give you a quick example here. I've bought 50 servers on-premise, 50 racks, put them in my data center, and I've created a 1,000 virtual machines. Each has a specific number of CPUs and memory allocated. Great. And I've installed an application. And I allocated um, 20 CPUs for that um, uh, application. And I've allocated um, 16 GBs of RAM. Right? Typical. When I move to the cloud, am I going to allocate 20 CPUs and 16 GBs of RAM? Maybe. Maybe no, maybe less, maybe more, right? The reason why I'm using what, what I am using on-premise is because I bought it. I pay for it. So I might as well use it. But when I move to cloud, if that application doesn't require that much, that many resources and requires 8 GBs of RAM instead of 16 and 10 CPUs instead of 20, then using 20 CPUs and 16 GB of RAM is only going to increase my total cost of ownership. Right, my um, invoice, my uh, cloud invoice at the end of the month is going to skyrocket. Something that Amit mentioned earlier. So we want to make sure that we look at the usage on premise, and then when we migrate, we're migrating and right sizing the environment. But also, as I said, we want to make sure that we are lifting and shifting quickly, and giving the developers time back to be able to innovate, to be able to help the business gain competitive advantage over other competitors. And in here, we're going to look first at cloud optimization, whether cloud cost, posture, we're going to optimize the cloud, but also make sure that these resources are being managed in real time. Obviously, at the end, what you're looking for is the tool consolidation, your observability being consolidated so that you're gaining more and more value. You're right-sizing your environment so that you're commercially not... ...or plan and grow out of it now in the run stage. And finally, Shorten your STSC, your software development life cycle, 
so that your engineers, your developers are able to continuously write code, develop code, test it, and release it um, quickly into the um, environment. How can Datadog help? Well, at this point, we're going to look again at the three core pillars of observability. Add the synthetics with the API. So we talk about the continuous testing, the bots. We talk about the service level objectives. We're going to add at this point your real user monitoring. We mentioned we want to monitor in real time. So make sure that we understand um, the front end and the user journey or experience and show it to whoever needs to see it so that improvements are continuously happening. And then to the developers, make sure that we're helping them with their um, testing, with their code deployment, with their release process, and make sure that your engineering team is continuously improving on and the newly deployed and newly um, developed cloud applications. Right, so this is, I don't want to say in details or in summary, but this is a nice overview that we wanted to create for you in order to um, share with you our experience of that cloud migration and how we can help. At this point, and before I turn it to my colleague, Guarda, um, we are looking to hear from you uh, with, with your questions. Um, and um, obviously, the polls um, that were um, that you saw on the screen and would be it would be it would be great if you're able to um, give us your feedback. Off to you, Warda. Thank you so much, uh, Karim. And I mean, this was a wonderful session, I must say. Uh, so, uh, hello everyone, uh, please, uh, the question answer uh, uh, section is open now. Please feel free to ask any queries, any questions you have in your mind in terms of digital transformation, uh, in terms of data dog. Uh, please feel free to ask any questions uh, and we will be happy to answer. So, we will be open for question answer session now. So, go ahead. Thank you, Varda. While we, um, while we get the um, audience adding their questions, there were some questions which were already shared on the chat and were answered privately. Let's go through them quickly also to share with everyone. Um, so uh, one question was, what are the actual challenges faced during cloud migration? Um, I'm going to um, elaborate more on that. And um, typically, uh, to keep it very, very short, Money is the, the first one that comes to, to, to everyone's mind is, um, I have a budget, how can I meet it? The second one is timeline. I, um, I want to do this with, um, in three to six months, for example. The third is skills, because especially in this region here, it's a region that's newly uh, adapting cloud. So uh, you'll find that there aren't many cloud architects and engineers um, with skills to do it. Um, the fourth one would be um, meeting the SLAs, the objectives. Basically, we have been doing something very well, um, consistent, persistent on premise, and now we're transforming into the cloud, but we need to make sure that we don't, um, we don't impact our um, uh, agreements and objectives. Okay, I believe this helps, Karim. Uh, there is a, there are a few more questions uh, in the from the audience. Uh, uh, how can we deploy and integrate uh, a ZT NA based platform? Uh, is is one of the questions. Sorry, deploy and integrate. Sorry, Warda. Uh, how can we deploy and integrate ZT NA based platform? ZT NA. I honestly don't know what ZDNA is. Um, so, uh, Andrew, if you can please. I believe, I believe Karim, uh, on this. Karim, there would be uh, how we are going to integrate with the multi cloud environment that could be more generic, uh, I believe. Yeah, perfect. 
Um, so um, zero trust network access. Okay. okay. Right. So um, with multi clouds, what you're really doing is looking at the, the, let's talk about the common ones, the AWS, the Azure, and uh, um, GCP. Well, it's basically um, deploying uh, agents on, um, let's say, EC2 instances or whatever uh, um, machines that they, is run on Azure, GCP, and um, AWS. But it's also connecting to the cloud natives, cloud native capabilities. If you want to, like CloudWatch, for example, from AWS, you can connect and pull the logs out there. Uh, but in general, and I want to point you out to a um, link, which I'll add in the in the um, chat now. Um, we have out of the box integrations, six hundred of them, a bit more, um, to connect with anything and everything. So. Uh, I'll share that link with you. You'd be able to look at, just search for whatever you want to integrate with, and you'll see details there. Were there any other questions we have? Yes. We might have a few. Yes, we do have a question. Um, it suggests, uh, uh, do we uh, provide cloud for the companies? Uh, if I have a data on cloud and I want to uh, archive it on local server, uh, if that can be done. We provide cloud. So the answer is no. What we do is we provide a SaaS-based solution that we host on AWS, GCP, or Microsoft Azure. But obviously, Vime Labs and the teams, the expert teams that we have, we can help organizations with this cloud migration. So if you have chosen a cloud provider or about to choose a cloud provider, we can work with you to make sure that you right size the environment and um, lift and shift your workload from on-premise to cloud. Okay. Uh, so there was one more question. Uh, if uh, if I have a data on cloud and I want to archive it to a local server, if that can be done. Um, so you have data on cloud and you want to archive it. Um, we can monitor this activity for you and make sure that your data is secure and is being um, transferred properly. But we do, we do not provide the capability of archiving, uh, whether on-premise or on the cloud. So keep in mind that we are a, a vendor for observability. So we're actually monitor, monitoring your jobs, your requests, your activity, your services, so your infra and, and, and operations. But we're not providing capabilities to actually do this um, archiving. Okay, I think this was useful. Also, uh, everyone, we are posting some important links. Uh, you can see there are few links from Karim and Amit. So please feel to copy it and you know you can refer to it, uh, which will be more insightful based on your queries. Well, uh, there, so there, is, well, there was a question regarding the pricing. So I have pasted a link with regards to the pricing. Uh, so yes. uh, yeah, that would be helpful for all of them. Yeah, that's a very yes. good point, Amit. Thank you. So pricing is available and published you can see it on um, uh, our website uh, we are also on the marketplace of aws uh, gcp and azure so if you have already um, selected your cloud provider or multi-cloud providers and um, you have contracted with them then you'd be able to just add data dog from that contract with your cloud provider um, and through their marketplaces I also want to add one quick note here. Um, we, on the screens, we have our uh, emails. Um, if you post the questions that we don't get, we, we, we don't get the time to answer, or that we don't answer um, fully, or you want to discuss a bit more with us, then please email us. You have my email, Amit's email, and Wanda's email on the screen, um, and, and we'll definitely make sure to, to, um, to answer your questions. 
okay so we have uh, one more question typically what time is uh, is what typically what is the average cost for saving with uh, cloud migration average cloud saving with cloud migration okay so in the planning it's typically the um, the baselining so in the planning stage i would say the the effort is understanding your on premise and how to map it to um, to your cloud so that would be more around time saving and more around the cloud invoice saving i do not have specific percentages because keep in mind that applications designed on premise in a monolithic manner uh, can be migrated into microservices can be migrated into containers into serverless functions and it's and it varies really and it also varies between cloud provider to cloud provider right but i what i will tell you is that in the planning it's the time and the cloud invoice in the migration it's definitely the time but the second thing it's the number of resources required from your size for this effort right without observability you'll find that you need many people from the infra team from the ops team from the security team from the business applications from the network team and devops teams and developers and all of them working with you um, and these people are who pay a lot of money for but also you need a lot of their time with observability you probably need a representative of each team doing a job right so the time and the effort and the run is 100 percent around cloud optimization which means it's all about that cloud invoice okay. i know the answer the the questions 100 percent the values are really specific by the way we do have an exercise that we run called a value realization where where we can do this exercise in details with you picking up the application details the clouder the um uh resources that uh, we're gonna baseline and migrate to and we'll be able to quantify the value better for you so Great. i believe uh Karim, this was very useful uh there is one more question uh, how do you assist CIOs with their financial planning for cloud migration? This is a very interesting question, I am saying. Uh, okay, so typically the first thing that CIOs want to do is, and forget about all the technical uh, details that we're talking about now, let's talk about CIOs. Um, the first thing they want to do is gain gain competitive advantage, uh, advantage over their the other competitors, right? So if we're talking about a uh, bank, then this bank has the same services offered by other banks, more or less, right? So the CIO, what they want to do is, you know, be better. Retail, same thing. Telco, same thing, right? So how can we help CIOs? Well, first we can help them by going to market quickly agility right this is what the cloud is if you migrate or introduce new services in the cloud you need to do them quickly and they need to be innovative and better innovative by uh, and by that i mean developers focusing on the innovations rather than on supporting and issues and fixing um, uh, outages right so that's that would be the first thing gain competitive advantage the second thing Every CIO is going to say the same thing. They are reducing my budget, right? Yes, they will. And the CEOs, the CFOs, they've, they have these habits of, we want to reduce cost. Uh, IT is the number one place where we're going to reduce cost from, right? But you, as CIO, still need to deliver the same thing you are delivering or were delivering, if not more. So well, the way we're going to help you here is by doing more with less. A cost-efficient, consolidated observability solution helping you to minimize outages so that you minimize impact on your business critical applications. I'm going to add a third thing, which is around um, 
FTE around employees, right? All the businesses grow 10, 20, 30, 40%, but IT team doesn't grow. IT team hiring is always, you know, backfilling if needed, we, we don't grow, right? And this is where you need a tool, easy to use, a tool that is helping your team spend a minute instead of 10 to do an activity and really empowering you to be able to deliver more with the same number of employees that you have. Okay. Uh, so... In terms of time. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, in respect of... And we still want to hear your question. So I'm just going to pass on to Warda um, uh, to give you the last insights, how you can reach us as well in, in case you have more questions. So off to you, Warda. Thank you so much, Karim. Uh, so in respect of time, uh, we will have to wrap up the session. Uh, we can see uh, that there are a few questions uh, which are still coming up. Channel is still open till end of the session, so please keep on posting the question and we will revert uh, to everyone individually. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Karim and Amit, for this wonderful session. I'm sure this will help all of us with the digital transformation journey. So, now as we are at the end of the session, I would like to thank you all for joining us today. You can write us down uh, on the mentioned email address, which you can see uh, on the screen right now. In case you have any queries, you want to discuss anything around digital transformation. We would love to be part of your digital transformation journey and we hope to meet you all very soon. So thank you so much again and have an excellent day ahead. And I'm, I'm, we, are, we all are hoping to meet you very, very soon. So thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone.